We may decide to spend our free time in many ways, whether it's reading a book, hanging out with friends, or spending time watching a favorite show on Netflix. But what does our brain do when we are not doing anything? To answer that, let's go back to 1997 when Gordon Schulman and his colleagues at Washington University published two papers in the Journal of Cognitive Neuroscience. At the time, positron emission tomography or PET scan was a popular method for trying to identify which brain regions were involved in particular mental processes, such as memory, vision, and language. Schulman wanted to see if certain parts of the the brain became active during different mental tasks. They looked at nine different pet studies. The first paper looked at which brain areas were active during tasks like moving, remembering, and spotting slight changes in images. But the results weren't very exciting. Only a few brain areas showed increased activity during all the tasks, and they weren't the most interesting parts of the brain either. Those were the boring parts of the brain, probably the same parts that were used when we studied history in school. The second paper by Schulman was really interesting as it answered a different question. What happens in the brain when you're not doing any specific tasks? Usually, scientists focus Focus on which part of the brain gets turned on when you are doing something like thinking or moving. But Shulman wondered what happens when your brain is just chilling out. Surprisingly, he found that certain brain areas actually became more active when people were resting compared to when they were doing activities. It's like the brain has its own set of tasks defined and when you're done with your chores, it takes a sigh of relief and goes on to do its own thing. Finally just done with this stupid geometry, now I can do my own stuff, never have time for my own stuff with this human, I'm gonna quit everything and go to a remote island for some peace and quiet. Scientists call this the default network because a set of regions in your brain will switch on when you're not doing anything, aka going to a default state. Imagine you're lying inside a PET scanner. You're given a task to identify whether two letters on the screen are the same or different. After doing this for a minute, the word rest appears. You know you have a minute of downtime before you start performing the boring task again. What is happening in the brain during this minute? You can try this right now. Go ahead and close your eyes for 30 seconds and try. Seriously, go try now. Instead of resting, your brain starts racing with thoughts, feelings and images. Most likely you're thinking about other people, yourself or both. This is what psychologists call social cognition, which simply means thinking about others, ourselves and how we relate to them. Turns out the parts of the brain that lights up during social cognition is the same part that lights up when we're not doing anything particular. Therefore, the default network supports social cognition. What's more interesting is that we don't just think about other people, rather we think about other people's minds, their thoughts, feelings and goals. This promotes understanding and empathy, cooperation and consideration. It suggests that evolution laid more emphasis on the development of social intelligence intelligence by focusing all the brain's free time on it. So you can say the brain doesn't want you to stay introvert. There's another key finding that comes from newborns. Babies show default network activity almost from the moment of birth. One study looked at what regions of the brain had high activity in two-week-old babies and the regions of default network were dancing in the club and having a good time. And the same was found in just two-day-old infants. You might be familiar with Malcolm Gladwell's famous claim that it takes 10,000 hours of practice to become an expert at something. To be honest, I'd be more convinced if it was something like 10,023.47 hours. 10,000 is just too good a number. Although normally, we tend to see it in terms of becoming a concert pianist, professional athlete, or an expert Twitch streamer. The brain puts in 10,000 hours and more to enable us to become experts in the social world. One study showed that our brains have put in 10,000 before we reach the age of 10. The fact that our brains often default to social thinking mode helps us become really good at understanding the complicated world of social interactions. This also explains why most people have trouble interacting with other people and are becoming more and more introverted. Constant stimulation to the brain with TikToks, Instagram Reels and other sources has rendered the brain unable to find any free time to do social thinking that it's designed to do. The so-called monkey mind is the consequence of this. You suppress your brain's social thinking by overstimulating it, which only returns with a much greater force when it finally has the time, that is, your bedtime. And insomnia joined the chat. I've been fortunate enough to witness the time of no smartphone and low stimulation, and remember being bored quite often. Today, being bored is a privilege. Not many people can say they are bored because entertainment is a click away at any time. The brain doesn't get enough downtime to process the past information and engage in evolutionary social thinking. Meditation is also deeply linked with this concept where you sit down and observe your thoughts. There's no effort to stop the thoughts or focus on a specific part of the body or something woo-woo, but to just sit back and let the mind wander. It's like you're watching a movie, a movie of your thoughts. This is one of the many reasons how meditation can help calm the monkey brain. Our brains are built to practice thinking about the social world and our place in it. From the time when we are babies to when we are adults, our brains are constantly practicing social thinking. It also suggests that evolution believes in being good at social interactions. To be honest, I don't see any Neanderthals commuting to work. Why? Because they're dead. 
long gone. All because they could not hold a conversation in their free time. And while we may not be perfect at it, this ongoing practice is crucial. What if our brains spend their free time on other things like learning math or improving logical reasoning? It will probably helpful but also quite boring but evolution chose social thinking as our main focus because it's essential for our survival and success. So you can say that our brains are built to practice thinking about the social world and our place in it. Therefore in order to become a social butterfly just like Ryan Reynolds you might want to consider going on long walks without your smartphone and let your brain wander into whatever direction it wants. Who knows, it may change your life.